whole idea of, of couple, the whole idea of partner, the whole idea of spiritual teacher, the whole idea of whatever you want to call it, authors. You know, you start off with, with the constellations that seem to be the most deeply ingrained, which are the, we could say, parent-child ones, and involve, well, we'll call them biological, you know, they say blood is thicker than water, and blood relatives, and blood, 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 blood. And after a while, we you know, we hear so much about the blood, 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 but we found blood of the lamb, and now they've got the blood relatives. Well, eventually, you start to loosen from that, and then you start to just shine the light and extend the ideas from the Holy Spirit. And the, still the Holy Spirit is going to use the concepts in the awakening. You still use the concepts, you know. If you're coming in and you're flying in on a plane to England and, and they give you the landing card and they have a little box for male or female, if you draw another box on that card <laughs> and you write in spirit, <laughs> You're going to have a real interesting encounter <laughs> at immigration control at London Heathrow. I mean, if they read Spirit, it's going to be like, okay, we got a 901. <laughs> and this and this. And the thing about it is, this is how the Spirit works. The Spirit will use the thoughts of the world so that it's, it's practical. And yet, as you keep letting the Spirit use them, use the words, use the symbols over and over, you're loosening every little time that you use them with the Holy Spirit. You loosen from identification with them. And your mind starts to shift and shift and shift. It was so great because we had talked this morning too, and, and Francis was sharing the same thing with me, she just shared with you. She said, I'm really seeing that the only peace of mind that I ever experienced consistently is when I really feel like the dreamer. And in psychology they call it lucid dreaming. You know, when you're aware that you're dreaming, that's, that's the most amazing thing. You could have fire-breathing dragons, you could have guns firing and bullets and swords. It doesn't matter if you're the dreamer. And that is a very profound state of mind. And that's where this is all heading. It's heading beyond all the concepts of the world. Everyone is truly heading into an emptiness. That's where our strength is, that's where our invulnerability is, that's where the glory is, is, is coming deeper into that. And this witness of what we're talking about, of Solaris last night, you know, our whole Solaris movie, and tonight's movie, Time's End, it's a great title, you know, for what we're moving into, is really about really going for this and seeing that not only can you do this, but that this is inevitable. You are on an inevitable journey of awakening to your reality as spirit. And the ego doesn't like the word inevitable. It's like, ho, 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 inevitable. It's just turning everything that's been upside down, right side up, and it's saying, this is not only happening now, but it's, it's, the outcome is assured. God's will for you is perfect happiness. You know, I am one self. With, along with my Creator, you know, it, all of these lessons are taking you into a direct approach to God. And ultimately, even the dreamer of the dream uh, position, there's one point in the Course where Jesus says that awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teachers. He comes right out in his book and he lays it out in plain English, in simple language. Awareness of dreaming is the function of God's teacher. Why is that so important? Is because the ego has done the whole switcheroo and said, oh you've forgotten the Christ, that, don't even go there. Don't even go there with this Christ word. That's way gone. You've lost heaven, you've lost nirvana, you're never going to get back in. You might as well make the best of it. But the ego doesn't want you to become aware that you're dreaming, because that's the next step to the waking up. When you are identified with the dream character, then all the guilt is there. It's really thick and heavy, thick as molasses, you know, where you're just swirling and you're just swimming and you're stuck in molasses, you're stuck in the guilt. Or like quicksand, you know, where you take a few steps and then every movement that you try to make to get yourself out of the quicksand, by rearranging the, the images on the, on the screen, just keeps you even deeper in the quicksand. 
and the struggle begins, you know, where you end up feeling like you want to fight the ego. I've had many people across the world tell me, I want to just kill my ego. If I, ooh, if I could get just <laughs> strangle it or something, you know, they, it's, it's put me through hell. It's, a, it's just a belief. You know, you want to unplug it, you don't want to try to kill it. If you try to kill it, it's just going to be like, oh, good, come on, let's get into it here. You know, when you come at it, it's going to come back at you because, you know, it's using your mind's belief and your mind's energy to maintain its facade, its mask. 